Intel 10 700K processors can easily be overclocked to an all-core clock of 4.9 GHz. Some can be overclocked to 5 GHz, but going to 5.1 GHz can be tricky with binned or silicon lottery based CPUs. You can blue screen or your motherboard may not be able to boot properly and then you gotta reset the BIOS. If you're having trouble or simply want to know how you can overclock to 5.1 GHz, we're going to take a look at what you can modify for both hyperthreading and no hyperthreading conditions. Under heavy workloads, hyperthreading can add up to 10 degrees Celsius to the cores of the 10700K. If you want 5.1 GHz and are thermal throttling with hyperthreading, but don't need or want hyperthreading, stick to the no hyperthreading part of the video. Environmentally, I live in a small apartment and the room temperature is 24 degrees Celsius. I'm using an Asus Maximus Formula 12 Z490 chipset. I use a Kraken Z73 AIO with the standard thermal paste. The case is a huge Corsair 1000D Mammoth. 10700K, 5.1 GHz, no hyperthreading. Before we start, some of the settings have different setting names compared to other manufacturers. For example, ASUS Multicore Enhancement on an MSI motherboard would be Game Mode. The AI Overclock Tuner is set to XMP2. B Clock and PCI frequencies are set to 100. ASUS Multicore Enhancement is set to Disabled, Enforce All Limits. MCE will not be used in this video due to overvoltage or heating at this frequency. SVID behavior is set to Intel's Fail Safe. AVX Instruction Core Ratio Negative Offset is set to 0. CPU Core Ratio is set to Sync All Cores. And All Core Ratio Limit is set to 51. The DRAM settings are the XMT defaults. CPU SVID support is disabled. The ring down bin is enabled. Min and max CPU cache ratio are set to 46. Note, my system became unstable above 46, so use caution if you're setting values above 46. B clock aware adaptive voltage is disabled. CPU core cache voltage is set to manual mode. CPU core voltage override is set to 1.37 volts. CPU VCCIO voltage is 1.25 volts. CPU system agent voltage is set to 1.25 volts. PCH core voltage is set to 1.0 volts. Scrolling back up to Digi plus VRM, CPU load line calibration is level four. CPU current capacity is 140%. CPU VRM switching frequency is set to manual. Fixed CPU VRM switching frequency is 500 kilohertz. You can optionally set this to auto. CPU power duty is T-probe. CPU power phase control is extreme. Go back to the previous menu and go to internal CPU management. CPU core cache current limit max is set to 255.75. Long duration package power limit is set to 225 watts. Package power time window is 56. Short duration package power is 225 watts. Back to the previous menu, go to advanced and CPU configuration. Scroll down and set hyperthreading to disabled. Go to CPU power management control, disable speed step and speed shift technology. Optionally, you can enable dual TAU boost. Go to exit, save changes and reset. We're going to use HW Info 64 and Prime 95 for 10 minutes. I'll leave the links in the video description. I believe core two is the weakest core of my CPU as it heats up the most. Now after 10 minutes, the CPU package maxes out at 92 degrees Celsius. Let's look at the 10700K 5.1 gigahertz with hyper threading on. If you use the settings earlier, simply go to the advanced tab, CPU configuration and enable hyper threading. Go to exit, save changes and exit. Next, let's rerun prime 95 for 10 minutes. Note, the CPU cores are roughly 8 to 10 degrees Celsius warmer, and the CPU package was 99 degrees Celsius and almost thermal throttled. Conclusion If you have a bin CPU and can achieve 5.1 GHz, stress test it before launching apps or games. If you thermal throttled with hyperthreading and don't want hyperthreading, retry and you could reach a stable 5.1 GHz without thermal throttling or lockups. Now I didn't include benchmarks such as Blender and Cinebench as this was much more stressful. 
However, if you want these benchmarks included for overclocking videos, such as the ones that I did, or for future videos, please let me know in the comments. I'm not able to push this PC to 5.2 gigahertz, and I know it's gonna be a challenge with this CPU. So I've ordered Cryonaut Extreme Thermal Grizzly to see if it makes a performance improvement. And if it does, and it allows it to be stable, I'll make a new video. So what did you think of the 10700K? Is your 10700K performing well or not? Let me know in the comments. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Follow me on Twitter at The Dave Stuff. And if you want to see more content like this, hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications. Have a wonderful day and I'll catch you later.